The Greek and Hebrew have the distinctive that every letter has a numerical value. So if that's true, and it is, then every word in the Greek has a numerical value. They call the study of that gematria. Okay? Now the numerical values, the total numerical values in the last 12 verses of Mark add up to 106,663. That's a multiple of seven exactly. You've got to be kidding. The verses 9 to 11, the geometrical value is a multiple of seven exactly. Verse 9, the multiple of seven exactly. Verse 10, the first word, multiple of seven exactly. The middle word, they we're talking about verse 10 here. And then the last word, the first, the middle, and the last word, all are multiples of seven exactly in terms of their numerical value. Verse 11, multiple of seven exactly. And then from 12 to the end, the geometrical value is a multiple of seven exactly. Can you imagine Panin, when he's discovering this, he must have had chills down his back. Because this is just too impossible to have happened by accident. Let's go further. The vocabulary I said was 98 words. The ones, 14 not used before in Mark. Seven that you found later in the New Testament. There are 35 occurrences of these things. The numerical value is also, all these are multiples of seven exactly. The vocabulary in verse 20 is a multiple of seven exactly. The words found, the, the uh, vocabulary found previously is a multiple of seven exactly. Found only here, multiple of seven. Word forms. Total forms, 133. The value of the total of those are a multiple of seven exactly. Those that occur once is a multiple of seven exactly. Those occur more than once is a multiple of seven exactly. Occurring 63 times is again a multiple of seven times, uh, and on it goes. Total occurrences is a multiple of seven exactly. The total value of the letters is a multiple of seven exactly. I'll take one of these. One of these words is the word deadly. It's not found anywhere else in the New Testament. It has a numerical value of 581, which turns out to be a multiple of seven exactly. It's preceded in the vocabulary by 42, or multiple of seven exactly, in the passage itself by a multiple of seven exactly. And so I, have, I gave you nine before. I've just added a few more. In fact, I didn't stop at 17. I stopped at 35. So if we go down here, it turns out that to have that happen accidentally is an awfully big number. Awfully big number. Um, and you say I'm exaggerating. Panin didn't discover 34. He discovered 75. I stopped here because you'll see it gets ridiculous. If I gave you a million supercomputers and gave you 4.3 million years to do it, you might have a chance of having this happen by accident. And that's with only 34 distinctive features of sevens. Panin has identified 75 of them. Anybody speculate that some scribe in a monastery, wrote, added these 12 verses out of his imagination? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think we could do it with a computer. No, the Bible is absolutely breathtaking. The more we study it, the more we discover there's design, not only in the content, but in the very structure, a design that you can't replicate even with the power of computers. If we take the verses 9 through 20, there's several ways to parse them. The total vocabulary I said was 98. Okay. The vocabulary that's found before this chapter in Mark are 84 different words. Of the 98, 84 were used before. But the, those are all multiples of seven exactly. Could that have happened by just random statistics? I don't think so. The vocabulary that you find only in this chapter are 14, obviously, that would derive from that. The ones that are used in the Lord's Address, there's 42. That's again a multiple of seven exactly. The words that were not part of his vocabulary are 56. Well, suppose I gave you a piece of paper and asked you to draft. Make up your own fictional last 12 verses of Mark. What are your chances of giving, meeting seven to the ninth constraints? 
One chance in 40 million. Okay. Okay, so would you like to try this? Seven to the ninth chances add up to four, over 40 million attempts that you're going to have to try if, you, if, if it's random. If you worked eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year, there are 2,000 hours per year, or you have 120,000 minutes per year to apply to this. Now, if you can do a draft in 10 minutes, you've got 10 minutes each time you try, it'll take you 403 million minutes, or 3,362 years, if you're doing it by hand. Anyone want to, anybody, you want to try? I'm not true. It gets worse. I only gave you nine constraints, okay? Words. Total words I told you were 175. In the address of the Lord, there were 56. In the rest of the passage, there was 119. Each one of these are multiples of seven. Verses 9 to 11, that's one way to parse this, is a multiple of seven exactly. 12 to 18, multiple of seven exactly. Verse 12, multiple of seven exactly. 13 to 15, multiple of seven exactly. 16 to 18, multiple of seven exactly. The conclusion, the last two verses, multiple of seven exactly. Anybody want to speculate that this was just a statistical accident? I don't think so. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue. Neither believed they them. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven, and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, and confirming the word with signs following. Amen. And when he had called all the people unto him, he said unto them, Hearken unto me, every one of you, and understand. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. 